hello everybody. So today we had a great news. One I've been waiting for two years. One I had predicted way too long ago and that took way too long to occur, which is the rate cut. Turns out the odds were 50-50, 25 or 50. We got 50. You know the news. It's everywhere on YouTube. All of the major YouTubers are talking about it. I am just going to talk about something a little different. I'm going to talk to you about why my channel is called Beat the Denominator. It is called Beat the Denominator just because of the Fed, just because of the dollar and how it works. The dollar is the denominator. That's what you have to beat. You have to beat the growth in USD. And that's not the natural state of thing. That is just the state of our world that we live in, where the dollar is literally printed, literally created out of thin hair by the primary uh, bank, the central bank, when they directly inject into money into the economy by buying bonds or commercial paper, but also by the, and especially by the commercial banks who, who, who create money based on the Fed funds rate, which is the rate at which they lend each other. Money is created, money is printed digitally either by the Fed either by the commercial banks. And that's the denominator. That's the denominator. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, should that denominator be growing over time? And why? Why is that? Um, and, you know, if you're from the, from the Austrian, uh, Austrian school of thought, you're, if you're a Bitcoiner, you, you obviously view this growth in the US dollar as theft, pure and, pure, pure, pure and simple. The, the normal state of the world, at least as Austrians view it, and I think as a lot of engineers view it, is goods and services, they are going to be more and more common, no matter what happens because of technology. Labor is also becoming more and more common because there's more and more people. And the assets too, in many ways, become more and more common. So wherever it's the homes, wherever it's the stocks, those assets, those things that we can build also become more and more common. It's okay for them to grow more and more common. Over time, things like your homes, for example, should be getting cheaper. Over time, stocks that do not grow, stocks that do not taking a greater share of the amount of dollars in the economy, companies that stagnate, they should get cheaper. Only the companies that take in more revenue than the dollar growth, than the monetary growth, only these companies should see their stocks outperform, right? This is normal for all of this to grow over time. Is it normal for the US dollar to also be growing over time at the same speed? Who said that, right? And and who gets to decide that? Well, this is the story of the US dollar and the infinity of the US dollar and why it's created out of thin air. What do we owe this fractional reserve banking system to? Who do we owe the honor? Who Who is the, the, the person that did that, right? Well, it was Roosevelt who did that for foreign nations in 1934. And then the Nixon shock in 1971 who outlawed the conversion of dollar into gold for foreign nations. So for Americans, this has almost been a standard of a standard for hundreds of years. Let me show you a bill from 1928. This was the bill from 1928, a $100 bill. You can clearly read, redeemable in gold on demand. That was full reserve. That's the way it used to work. Dollar was gold. Dollar was gold and vice versa. They were interchangeable. Today, what is it today? Well, today, the money supply is not controlled by the laws of nature, like they are for gold. Today, the money supply is controlled by an unelected committee. It is an unelected committee who follows economic, economic science, which is mostly a belief. And with, through that, with that, just, just, just prints money, in order to control some imaginary random you know, desires for inflation to be 2% and for unemployment to be low. And this is, this is why the, the, money, the, the money supply is not hard. The, 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 the US dollar is not a hard currency anymore. It, it is a loose currency. It's a, it's a currency that grows 
a lot. It's a currency that be, that's becoming more and more widespread. Uh, Warren Buffett, you know, which I've criticized on the channel for many of his investing style, Warren Buffett talks about how people don't pick up pennies anymore. People people don't even bother picking up a penny if they see it on the floor anymore, right? That's because the money, the dollar, is just, just losing so much value. And that is not the case of the, the ancient standard that we had, which which was gold, the gold standard, the, the big advantage was, was there's a limited amount of gold that we have in in nature. And even if you were to assume that a lot of gold is yet to be dug, and and sure enough, new gold we found it all the time. We find new gold all the time. You can find it. People talk about the oceans. Uh, a huge deposit was found recently in Africa. You know, of, of course, the more sci-fi people will uh, think about mining gold on, on asteroids and that sort of stuff. Um, gold really collapses into energy because even if you find it, you still need an enormous amount of energy to extract the gold. And this is always going to be true. It's, it's If you see these mining sites, these mining rigs, they require a tremendous amount of energy to extract the gold. You cannot extract the gold by pressing a button. But you can, quote-unquote, extract U.S. dollars by, by pressing a button, like they did in 2020. This is the dollars in the, in the U.S. financial system. In 2020, you can see the crisis of 2020. It was very easy for them to open the floodgates of money. And that's why we had Boomtown USA in late 2020 and throughout 2021. Remember February of 2021? Remember asset prices back then? That's because they opened the floodgates of money. And those floodgates of money are going to be opened again. They were opened again today. Today we've opened that door again by dropping the rates by 50 basis points, more than many of us were, were thinking. So the money supply is just going to expand again. And so that means that in real terms, and of course I, did, I didn't put that in the thumbnails, but in real terms, we're going to get an actual bull run in real terms. Because what you find is that everything we value, those goods, those services, those units of labor, the, the, the productivity of our labor, all of that is going to increase over time. And that is normal. But the dollar is playing catch-up with our increases in productivity. So when the dollar plays catch-up with our increases in productivity and when the dollar exceeds our increases in productivity, the dollar, the dollar supply, the new dollars issued, exceed our ability to create ever more goods and services. When that is exceeded by money growth, then you get inflation. And we are in this system where we get inflation because even though we produce more stuff every year, the dollar is being produced even more quickly than the amount of stuff we produce every year. If we had a very hard money standard, and of course, you know, on this channel, I'm big on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is fixed at 21 million. You can never, ever have more than 21 million Bitcoin, which is why Bitcoiners talk about infinity divided by 21 million, right? But you could use other fixed things, right? You could use Apple stock. You could argue Apple stock is a much better form of money than the U.S. dollar, right? Because they buy back the stock and the stock gets gets harder and harder to get over time. You know, a little bit like Bitcoin. Bitcoin gets lost. People die and don't give their keys to anybody of their Bitcoin. And there's fewer and fewer and fewer enough that are hard good, that hard asset. The problem is in the denominator. That's the name of the channel. That's why you got to beat the denominator. You have to beat the monetary, in, in, the, the monetary expansion of a denominator. That's why assets go up. Much of assets going up, you can be explaining that with interest rates and with the money supply. And it's eerily similar. I, I suggest, if some of you are familiar with like software tools like TradingView, I suggest take the price of your favorite asset and divided by M2. And, and, and remember, this is a, a point I've made on this channel before, is M, M2 money stock is, is very misleading because it only takes dollars within the U.S. banking system. And of course, there's tons of dollars outside of the U.S. banking system. There are plenty of dollar loans issued outside of the banking system. It's called formerly called the Euro-Dollar system. A lot of people don't call it like that anymore. But that system 
is printing dollars galore, is printing a bunch of dollars too, and we don't know the size of the stock. Like we know there's about $21 trillion in the US financial system. We have no idea how many dollars are offshore outside of the USA. And of course, that money that is held outside of the USA, created by commercial banks outside of the USA, makes it way, way back to the US, makes it way back around the world, right? The, U, the US dollar is the, is the global reserve. The point I'm trying to make is let's look let's look at real estate, and you know short term I, I think real estate is gonna is gonna be a, a a a tough suggestion. I think short term real estate is gonna suffer, but over the long run, at least you know for the next say decade, I think real estate is gonna be okay, just okay, not like stock, but just okay. You see, real estate we have a, what 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 eighty four to eighty five million single family homes right now, and you can only add about a million to a million five new homes a year. The, the the might of the entire U.S. economy can only add about one million. So you see, one million homes or one point five million. So. For, from from an inflation standpoint, from a, from a being able to hold your value standpoint, single family homes, they're somewhat of a good idea because we we, we can't really build more than five percent new single family homes each year. Now, of course, in twenty twenty, we were able to print, you know, about thirty to forty percent more dollars in one year. You can't print 30 to 40% more homes in one year. So that's why, if you look at the chart of real estate, if you look at real estate, this is the Case Schiller Index for the past 15 years, roughly. I mean, this is a prediction too, but for roughly the past 16 years, you can see it's been roughly following the growth of the dollar, the growth of the money supply, minus the dilution in the form of the new homes and the new housing starts. And so you find that. Um, the, the growth in the price of real estate just slightly lags the growth of new dollars. So real estate does not beat the denominator, right? You beat the denominator only if the growth of your assets out, you know, surpasses surpasses the growth of the US dollars. That's how you beat it. So SP is roughly the same as money growth. Roughly, if you look at if you look at the number. Um, but it does not outpace it. And there's assets that outpace it, like the QQQ. And I believe we're going to get in a bull run for the QQQ. Growth stocks tend to, to outpace it. And assets with truly fixed supply tend to also outpace it. Like art, like Bitcoin. These have truly, truly fixed supply. And so when you say, let's take, you know, let, let's take an example. You were to take Bitcoin, you would have 21 million Bitcoin divided by an ever-growing pie of US dollars. And so if you divide all of the Bitcoin by all of the US dollars in circulation, you can see that in terms of US dollar, the price of your Bitcoin is increasing because one of them, the, the, the top here, the nominator, is not changing. It is something tangible. And it is being divided by the dollar, which is growing ever so exponentially as we are about to do it. And of course, we know, we know, I mean, I mean, it's, this is, of course, for the viewers of the channel, this channel are fully aware of that, but, but this is always funny to see the, the, the chair of the Fed say it outright, we print it digitally, right? As a central bank, we have the ability to create money digitally, they can print money digitally, that is, that is just the way it works, and the commercial banks do the same thing, when you, when you go borrow a million dollars to buy a house, you're not taking that money from a saver, it is a writing game, it is, it is a double entry accounting game, and the money, of course, is new money that is being issued whenever you get a loan or you get a mortgage, and that's how the money supply end up, ends up growing to, to epic proportions, and that is why when you drop the rates, more money will be printed, mostly by other commercial banks, when you drop the rates, because, of course, a lot more people, a lot more companies are going to find it compelling to go out and borrow money, right? One of, what, what are the main discussions you hear today, this afternoon? Oh, why don't you go refinance your mortgage, right? That's, that's a trending topic on Twitter. Mortgage rates are going to drop. Let's create new money to pay the old debt, Right? Oh, why don't you, um, you know, money is going to get cheaper. Why don't you buy a bigger house? Why don't you borrow money to buy a car? Why don't you borrow money to buy a couch or cosmetic surgery, as I discussed in my video uh, this morning, right? It's, it's, um, it's, just, it's just whatever people do, right? They, they, um, they, you borrow more money, you spend more money. 
and uh, and every time you borrow money, that's new money supply that's being added to the system. So it it is a, it is a, it is a highly highly inflationary system, and you know that's why that's why I run away from USD. I try to not hold USD. That's 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 even why some people, you know, go as far as to say. I mean, I, I believe I believe that to to uh, an extent within reason. But debt is good. Debt is good because when you go on debt, you're effectively shorting the US dollar because when you'll be paying off that debt. 20, 20, 30 years from now, the, the size of the pool will be so much bigger that the value of the debt you're paying off will be so much smaller. Um, and, and, you know, we'll see how low the rates drop. You can see now the, the meeting probabilities, the Fed, CME Fed watch tool is getting very optimistic here. Um, 2.75 by, by this time 2025 is kind of what the market is predicting. I happen to believe it's going to be quicker lower sooner than most people think but i have been wrong and i have underestimated the ability of jay powell to be stubborn and that ability to you know to know to you know have have, have have hope and think interest rates can be this high so we'll see but in my view over the very long term make no mistake the rate is gonna stay zero the rate is gonna be zero over the long run. This is this is just the way it is. There's too much debt in the system, too many projects that need to be financed by governments, by companies, and they don't want to shut down these projects. And so the only way to do that is to devalue the currency until it's worth almost nothing. And that's late Charlie Munger who says that, who's like the most anti-Bitcoin person, right? Over a 99-year period, the currency is going to zero. This is just the way it works. So I'm happy about the fact that we've stopped this bluff and I'm happy about the fact that, the fact that the fluctuation now is going to be very mild. It's going to be only down and we are going to be able to focus on the fundamentals of our companies, which is what I love to focus the most on this channel, finding those fundamentals that are going to able, enable sales growth, revenue growth, to exceed the denominator. Revenue growth has to exceed the issue of new dollars. Otherwise, you are drowning. You, you, you got to get your fair share of new dollars being issued each year as a company as your baseline. Your baseline is you get your fair share of new dollars issued. And then you got to beat that. You have to beat those 15% of new dollars being issued each year. And you beat it only by having 16, 17, 18 20% revenue growth, then that means your real growth would only be 5% because the dollar diluted you by 15%. That's that's how I view stocks. That's how I view the world. And I'm very excited that the rates are dropping. I'm very excited about this not being a monthly recurring conversation all the time, all the time, all the time. This is all people have been talking about for the past two years and certainly caused a lot of stress for a lot of companies, for a lot of investors. So this was not investment advice, no financial advice, just entertainment. Hoping you were entertained. Please like, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.